to know we have seen uh, gatot gaja is born and then the pandavas along with kunti as per uh, yasna rishi sarpai go to eka chakra which though under a particular king still is not protected by that king and hence has fallen in the hands of an asura bakasura and the deal is that instead of uh, bakasura wantonly killing and murdering people the people themselves each family will take turns to give him food and also offer themselves as food so these pandavas in the guise of brahmanas daily go for bhiksha they are staying in a particular household of a brahmana as advised by vyasa maharishi and life goes on bhima especially is the worst affected because bhiksha is hardly sufficient for him he is also called brikodara one with the stomach of a wolf if you have noticed a wolf if you look at uh, national geographic or discovery a wolf is always one with a broad chest but tapering almost non existent stomach you know how much it eats the appetite is so high the jataragni the digestive fire is so high that it digests like this so bhima bhima sena is also called brikodara one with a wolf's stomach so where he is portrayed in some of the uh, serials and so on i see him portrayed as a bulky person he is not bulky he is all sinew rough and tough strong beyond imagination so he is called brikodara so bhima sena is the worst affected because whatever they get in bhiksha kunti distributes it like this she keeps half of whatever has been gotten for bhima sena and the rest half they divide amongst themselves the four brothers and kunti herself equally so the turn of the family the brahmana family that they live with their turn comes and they are in deep fear anxiety the father mother two children each person says i will go to bakasura and their reasoning is very very intense and uh, heart rending on overhearing this kunti suggests that uh, her son bhima sena can go so bhima goes with cart loads of food tasty stuff he goes there right before bakasura's cave he stops and uh, after a long time he is getting this opportunity so he eats he relishes the food in the meantime bakasura is all hungry he is impatient what is happening dude where are you so he comes out roars and finds bhima a puny human being he is an asura a great asura a human being eating up all that stuff he roars but bhima does not even care to look he is so enjoying his food he's been on diet you know after a diet you really relish food in tamil they say pasi irunda rusi irukum with hunger with appropriate hunger you have your taste buds are kindled so he's relishing the food and he does not even care for bakasura bakasura is angry and he comes and dashes his fist on bhima's back but no response 
he is amazed now he is really angry he is going to do away with bhima in a most cruel manner that's what he thinks bhima once he is done he is satisfied now he is ready for the duel so he takes a bakasura he leaves angled the body of bakasura right outside the gates of the ek chakra people see it and they think it's some gandharvas or devas who have done this and they are happy very happy so this is how the time passes in eka chakra then they hear the news of the swayamvara of draupadi in panchala desha and uh, they hear of the miraculous birth of draupadi and her brother drishtadyumna so we have earlier seen uh, drona has developed this enmity against drupada and he takes revenge sweet revenge through the pandavas especially arjuna after that it's like a festering wound within drupada he wants revenge against drona so he approaches two rich rishis yaja and upayaja who conduct a yagna and out of the yagna kunda come drishtadyumna the awesome drishtadyumna and draupadi the world renowned beauty draupadi krishna she is also called krishna the dark one the dark beauty interestingly uh, in the mahabharata we find uh, say for example nakula is considered the most handsome person in the whole of mahabharata and he is dark krishna shri krishna bhagwan shri krishna is dark krishna draupadi is dark and extremely beautiful so she arises out of fire and word is sent out that her swayamvara is going to be conducted all things from all the lands assemble there because her beauty has by now become something like a legend and everybody wants every kshatriya aspires for her hand in swayamvara but drupada has in mind arjuna because he wants arjuna as an ally the one who defeat, defeated the powerful drupada drupada wants arjuna for an ally for his son in law then nobody can defeat him and drishtadyumna is born to take revenge on dronacharya to eliminate him so the pandava pandavas along with kunti go to panchala desha again as per vyasa's advice vyasa maharishi appears at key points he just appears out of thin air it is said just materializing himself and then when the job is done dematerializes he poof vanishes so awesome stuff not fantastic real stuff so vyas advise uh, them to go seek the hand of draupadi so everyone is assembled now these pandavas are disguised as uh, brahmanas not kshatriyas so nobody knows them after the episode at varnavata everyone is under the impression that the pandavas are dead have been burnt but they are alive so they are disguised as brahmanas nobody expects them so they stay at a potter's house and have a very good time now the event comes swayamvara happens and uh, there is this matsya yantra a machine of a fish which the kshatriyas have to shoot they have to fire arrows and bring that machine down and not metal bow so not everybody can string it people great kshatriyas they try to move the bow and they cannot even move the bow 
everybody uh, is surprised not even able to move the bow and these are great kshatriyas powerful kshatriyas finally karna comes he picks the bow and every, there is a huge applause and he strings it but at that time draupadi intervenes and says i will not marry a suta putra and that's a great insult to karna he leaves it there and goes away it's a great insult because he is now the raja of angadesha and draupadi insults him in front of everybody saying he is a suta putra that means a, a charioteer's son and that's a great insult for a kshatriya then from the brahmana's side arjuna stands up he comes forward and there is a huge uproar the kshatriyas say how can a brahmana there is an assembly of kshatriyas how can a mere brahmana come forward but uh, brahmana some brahmanas argue no did not agastya did not rama the bhargava rama not dasharada rama bhargava rama take up arms why can't a brahmana do it in fact kshatriyas have come forth only from brahmanas as we have seen earlier that's the cause of evolution so arjuna comes forward without even looking at the yantra he just shoots five arrows and brings it brings it down and there's a huge applause as well as uproar and in the audience is krishna and balarama krishna knows clearly this is arjuna and he looks at all the uh, pancha pandavas this guy is the brahmanas and he knows them till then they have never met each other they don't they have not seen each other but krishna knows krishna has made the yadus the andhakas bhojas vrishnis he has made them not to participate in this swayamvar because if they participate if krishna participates everything is lost so he strategically uh, prevents the participation of yadus in this swayamvar so arjuna is the hero but the kshatriyas cannot take it lying down so there's a huge uproar and they challenge and arjuna and bhimasena become ready for the challenge arjuna and karna meet in a duel and shalya and bhimasena meet in a duel but finally it's resolved the kshatriyas resolve that uh, after all these are brahmanas why should we fight with them if they have won the swayamvara then so be it if they have won the hand of draupadi so be it so krishna all and with krishna very very sweet words come out of his mouth durvasa is the foul speech one harsh speech durvasa harsh speech whatever comes out of his mouth is harsh inimiya irukad no it's not sweet it's harsh powerful harsh krishna is sweet madhura like honey So Krishna cajoles everyone, saying these are brahmanas. Let it be, and everyone agrees, and uh, the crowd disperses. Now, along with Draupadi, they go back to Kunti, where Kunti is, and Kunti, as is the habit, says, uh, "Share the arms, the bhiksha, amongst your." oh oh but the arms is draupadi but the mother's word cannot become untrue and hence they decide that uh, all five of them will marry draupadi together that's how it's decided drishtadyumna follows and finds out okay these have to be uh, the pandavas 
Krishna and Balarama just before then, they follow the Pandavas back to where Kunti is. And Krishna and Balarama introduce themselves, fall at their feet, because Krishna and Balarama render to Yudhishthira. And they are very very happy. Everyone is very happy but they quickly retreat. Because it's not time yet for the Pandavas to be discovered. No? There are spies everywhere. Duryodhana has very good spies. So it's not time yet. He might harm them. So Drishtadyumna goes back to Drupada. And Drupada invites them uh, to the for a formal marriage. There Yudhishthira introduces that all five Pandavas, he does not, you know, he reveals themselves to be Pandavas. All five of us will marry Draupadi. On knowing that they are the Pandavas, Drupada is so happy. Oh, actually Arjuna has won her hand. But on coming to know that all five Pandavas will marry one single lady, he is mighty unhappy. That's when Vyasa Maharishi enters. Vyasa Maharishi takes Drupada by the side, takes him to a different chamber and explains the background, what happened in some previous births. So it so happens that uh, on a time, things don't die. Because Surya is conducting the Yajna and Yama is part of it. And hence Yama does not do his work. Because for the time being, you know, there is a, you know, what can we call, a holiday. So human beings don't die. That's a good time for everybody. There is Indra participating in it. And, uh, through the celestial river Ganga there are golden lotuses coming down the stream and Indra is curious to find out where is it coming from as he follows it upstream in the Himalayas he comes across a lady who is crying and each of her tears become golden lotuses and float downstream so he asks the lady what is the problem who are you she leads him to a place where there is you like Sindra announces himself and Lord of the universe for which the youth does not even pay attention he is busy playing Sindra gets angry how dare you insult the Lord of the universe for which one glance from the youth Kataksha Kataksha means uh, one side glance because a direct glance might burn you. A s one side glance and Indra is paralyzed. Then he comes to realize that that is Shiva and Parvati. Mahadeva. He is just a Deva. He, this is Devanka Dev Mahadev. Oh, oh. Now Indra has had it. Shiva says, you are arrogant. You need to be taught a lesson. All the time smiling. So he uh, takes him to a cave. Let get into, into the cave. And inside the cave are four other people. These are former Indra. Now Indra is a petition, a title. Keep changing. So these are former Indras. You know. Vishwa book, Bhuta Dhaman, Sibi, Shanti, and Tejasman. These are the Indras. So they are shut inside the cave. And Shiva has good reason to do that. Now these five are born as the Pancha Pandavas. And Shiva says, in a future birth, this lady who is crying is Sri herself. Sri, Lakshmi. And she will be born and marry all five of you. For a length of time you will be in this cave until you realize your arrogance. And that dies down. 
and you come back in humility. And these are the Pancha Pandavas who are in their past birth, five Indras. Yasa explains all this. He further explains there was this Rishi Putri. Sri later was born as a Rishi Putri, the daughter of a famous Rishi. And she did tremendous tapas because she did not have an husband. So Shiva Shankara was gratified and appeared in front of her. So she asked him, I want a husband. There was no response. So she asked again, I want a husband. No response. Husband. No response. Husband. No response. Husband. Then Shiva grants so she will have five husbands. Because she she was under the impression that Shiva did not uh, listen. Poor lady. So she asked five times. And hence she is born later as Draupadi. And hence she is destined to have five husbands. But excellent husbands, these Pancha Indras. So when uh, Vyasa explains this, Drupada is satisfied and uh, agrees to the marriage. And the marriage happens, it's wonderful. And news re reaches back to Dhritarashtra in Hastinapura that your son has won the hand of Draupadi. Now Dhritarashtra is all happy. Oh, Duryodhana won it. Then the messenger replies, no, no, Arjuna has won it. He is also his son, technically, Chitapa, or uh, rather Piryapa. No. Tutrashtra feigns happiness, but in his heart of hearts he feigns, oh, oh no. So the Pandavas are alive. But then he decides uh, it is time for... Uh, Vidura to go there and invite the Pandavas back home. Before the marriage even. As the Pandavas proceed towards the Swayamvara, for the Swayamvara, they are actually without any guru, a spiritual preceptor, one who can take care of them. On the way they encounter a Gandharva, Angaraparna. Angaraparna is haughty. He is a Gandharva. Human beings, he is sporting along with his wife. And these human beings dare to disturb him. He is annoyed. He clearly says, hey, get lost. But Arjuna and the Pandavas are in no mood to listen. They say, who are you? This is a common place. Earth is the place for everybody. Rivers are the places for everybody. Everybody can enjoy. Who are you to say, ask us to get lost? And there happens a duel. And Angaraparna is bursted. He is defeated badly. His Ratha is burnt. And hence he gives up the name Angaraparna. Angaraparna means a you know fiery chariot. He gives up that name. I'm I'm not worth it being called because I have been defeated by a mere human. So in exchange, he wants the friendship of Arjuna and he wants the knowledge of that Astra. Arjuna gives it willingly. And in exchange, Angaraparna actually gives him wonderful chariot and steeds which when taught off will appear. Horses, excellent horses not found on earth. Which are lean, but which can go at tremendous speeds. Which do not get tired. Such horses, wonderful horses. And he also gives the signs of Chakshushi. The signs of distance seeing to Arjuna. And he advises the need for a guru. He points uh, the Pandavas to Dhaumya. And hence Dhaumya is adopted 
or is approached by the Pandavas and made requested for him, you know, the Pandavas request him to be their guru. And Dhomya agrees. From then on, Dhomya is along with the Pandavas in whatever they do. Angaraparna calls Arjuna Tapatya. Tapatya, Arjuna is uh, amused. Tapatya? Why do you call us Tapatya? For which Angaraparna actually explains, you are the son in the lineage of Tapati. Tapati, the daughter of Surya, who married Samvarana. Samvarana is uh, in the Puru line. So Samvarana. Actually, Samvarana and Tapati give birth to Kuru, after which Kauravas, Kuru lineage. Even Pandavas belong to the Kuru lineage. Kurukshetra, because Kuru, the Kshetra, that field, was actually Kuru's field of penance, and hence a very powerful field, Kurukshetra. So he also explains uh, the stories of Vasishta and Vishwamitra. Now how Vishwamitra was actually in the line of the Kushikas. So he was called Kaushika. He was the uh, a powerful king and the son of Ghadi. was a very powerful king. So once he happens to en encounter uh, Vasishta in his hermitage and he has, you know, Vishwamitra Kaushika has a huge army. Vasishta invites them, offers them food. Kaushika refuses. How can you, a Brahmana, offer food to so many, uh, such a big army? After which Vasishta just points to Nandini. He asks Nandini, offer them food. And lo and behold, food comes out. Nandini is the divine cow, daughter of Surabhi. And everybody is satiated. No, the entire army is fed a sumptuous meal. Now, Kaushika is a king. And Vasishta happens to have his hermitage within his kingdom. So, Kaushika, the Kshatriya, who has the job to protect, actually gets this feeling, hey, I need this Nandini. Why does a Brahmana need this Nandini? And he starts taking her away without Vasishta. Nandini cries. Vasishta says, Okay, you take care. Nandini's order comes a huge army, diverse army that raises Vishwamitra's or Kaushika's army to the ground. Now, Kaushika cannot bear this. He does immense tapasya. He says, Being a king, I thought I was the most powerful, but being Kshatriya is no use. Brahmana Shakti is much powerful. So he does immense tapasya, gets many celestial weapons, again attacks Vasishta. Vasishta simply ignores him. Just with his danda, his stick, the stick takes care of uh, Kaushika. Then later he does immense tapas and finally he is acknowledged to be a Brahmana Rishi, that is Brahma Rishi. So that's how the story goes. But the, uh, then he is called Vishwamitra because he is found to be a Mitra, a friend of the entire world. So he is called Vishwamitra. Even then, there, uh, you know, the enmity of Vishwamitra with Vasishta does not end. So Vasishta has many children. Shakti is the uh, first. Parashara is Shakti's son. Vyasa is Parashara's son. So they come in the Vasishta. Vasishta's lineage. So Shakti, once on a time, he encounters Kalmashapada. Kalmashapada is a Raja, a Kshatriya. So they both have to cross a certain path, which is narrow and hence both of them cannot cross it together. One has to step aside. Kalmashapada says, you are a Brahmana. Step aside. Shakti is a powerful Rishi. He, is, he does not budge. And Kalmashapada does something that should not be done. He uses his whip. He lashes at Shakti. Vishwamitra observes this. Kshatri curses 
Kalmasha Pada. Since you have behaved like a Rakshasa, not as a protector, but one who has to be protected from. Rakshasa means one from whom you have to protect yourself. You have behaved like a Rakshasa. And hence, I have to protect myself against you. So you be a Rakshasa. A human eating Rakshasa, cannibal. It's a powerful curse. Vishwamitra seizes this opportunity. He asks the Rakshasa Kinkara, who is motivated also by Kshatri's, uh, Kshatri's curse. He enters Kalmashapada's body. And from then on, for 12 years, Kalmashapada runs around as a Rakshasa, human eating Rakshasa. So Kalmashapada, at a time, eats off Shaktri. Vishwamitra further goads him to do away with all of Vasishta's sons. So Kalmashapada, the Rakshasa, the Kshatriya turned Rakshasa, eats all of Vasishta's sons. Vasishta is, is such a great being that he does not curse Vishwamitra back. He does, with a single flick of his hand, he can erase the entire Kushikas, of which Vishwamitra is the foremost. But he does not do that. He suffers it. He in fact tries to kill himself. But as fate would have it, Shakti's wife, Adrishtini, follows him and says, I am pregnant with Shakti's son. And hence Vasishta gives up the effort of killing himself. He does not want to take revenge. He actually wants to eliminate himself. Because what is this what is this worth? Is human life worth it? No point. I have lost all my sons. But now there is hope. Because there is the grandchild. And hence Shakti Shakti's son, Parashara, comes out. And Vasishta lives for Parashara. Then Kalmashabada is also freed from the curse of Shakti by Vasishta. And he becomes a Raja again. And that's how it proceeds. So Dhaumya becomes the Guru of the Pandavas. And the Pandavas with Dhaumya's help proceed towards the Swamvar. So now Draupadi is married, we have seen. And uh, Vidura is sent to bring the Pancha Pandavas along with Kunti and Draupadi back to Hastinapura. Because all said and done, political science, strategy is very very important for a Raja. Dhritarashtra recognizes this. He clearly sees that the entire kingdom remembers that they were the ones who eliminated the Pandavas. Now by showing affection Pandavas, that would be the best strategic move. Can, can win over the hearts of all the people again. So Yudhishthira is given half the kingdom, Khandava Prastha, a good for nothing land. But in all his large heartedness, Dhritarashtra gives half the kingdom, a useless land, to Yudhishthira and says, uh, let that be peace between you and Duryodhana. You rule from Khandava Prastha. So with Krishna's help, Khandava Prastha is Mishra to create a beautiful palace and all that. And Vishwakarma does that. So without the movement of these hands, words don't come out. And hence you see uh, when the hands get excited, this uh, this microphone falls down. So Indraprastha. It's called Indraprastha after, you know, because of Indra's grace. Vishwakarma is employed by Indra. Because of Indra's grace, there is the land, you know, there is the palace, there is the kingdom. And hence Indraprastha. 
so many brahmanas many people follow yudhishthira because he is uh, he is their king duryodhana everybody sees through his later he realizes this and uh, he takes care he adopts a strategy to win over everybody so this happens everybody is settled in indraprastha and narada appears there to bless them and uh, he says uh, okay now you have a common wife but you need to be very careful about it because it can create till now you have been together but because of a single lady there can be a lot of problems like the story of sunda upasunda sunda upasunda are the sons of nikumba great asura and they after immense tapasya they get this boon from brahma himself brahma ji gives them a boon saying uh, they ask for a boon we should be immortal brahma ji says no no that is not possible even i have to give up this body so i cannot grant you immortality ask for something else so they ask for a boon we should be killed only at each other's hands and they are so together that it just cannot be done and they they are a torture to everybody they kill rishis they kill kshatriyas they, they play havoc and nobody can stop them because they have this boon with a boon from someone like brahma ji others cannot make that statement false and hence they are bound by that statement that's a boon if a ceo of a company says something others are bound by that statement you cannot make that statement false that's not right that's that cannot be done you would be out of a job and uh, this sunda upasunda are a big menace so brahma ji as uh, trust me to create uh, tilottama so she is so bewitchingly beautiful that uh, all the devas everybody is clear okay this is the end of the uh, asura so she goes appears in front of uh, sunda upasunda and uh, immediately this brother says hey she is my wife and your sister in law this brother says she is my wife and you are sister in law and they beat each other to death so narada explains that it's very very important that you not be carried away by your affection for a common wife you should still be together so there is an agreement reached among the brothers along with narada's permission that uh, there would be a period of time where uh, krishna or draupadi will spend time exclusively with one husband at that time no other husband can enter the apartments if it is done of for 12 years so this is agreed upon once what happens uh, draupadi is with yudhishthira and uh, arjuna because a brahmana has uh, an errand for a brahmana has to be done he has to use his bow and arrow which is within yudhishthira's apartment so he has to enter he thinks his kshatriya dharma of protecting is more important than uh, he enters the apartment he does what the brahmana asks and later presents himself to yudhishthira before yudhishthira asks for his pardon and says no i am going on a vanavasa of 12 years yudhishthira feels very bad he says no, no problem you know it's okay but arjuna says no a rule is a rule let me go so he goes on a vanavasa now very interesting times 12 years he gains tremendously in wisdom strength and so many aspects so 
first he encounters Ulupi, Kauravya's daughter, Ulupi, the Naga, Kauravya. So Ulupi is a Nagakanya, Nagakanya. And she requests Arjuna for union. Arjuna agrees because it's Kshatriya Dharma. You cannot refuse. So far, from the point of view of Dharma, not Kama, Dharma, Arjuna agrees. And uh, Ulupi and uh, Arjuna unite. Then Arjuna goes his way. Ulupi actually gives birth to Airavan that we will see later. Then he encounters in Manipur Chitravahana's daughter Chitrangada. Chitrangada is given in marriage to him as per the Putrika Dharma. Putrika Dharma means uh, the father of the girl will retain the son born to the girl because they don't have a uh, continuity. So out of the union of Arjuna and Chitrangada is born Babruvahana. And then Arjuna goes on his travels, Tirtha Yatra, he visits many holy places and he goes to the southern ocean where he encounters uh, these five holy water bodies but which do not have any uh, rishis or uh, you know sadhus around it. He is very surprised. Then he comes to know of the crocodiles living there in those five, five crocodiles. And he ventures into one and kills the crocodile. Upon which there is the Apsara that is liberated. She says we have been we have been cursed by a Brahmana. And there are five of us. I am one amongst those. Please uh, liberate my other friends, Apsaras. And we will be ever grateful to you. We were in fact told by Narada that uh, when we were cursed, we were told by Narada that uh, we would actually be liberated by you, Arjuna, the Pandava. So he liberates all the uh, five Apsaras. And from then on, Rishis can again uh, you know, do tapasya on the banks of those sacred spots. Then he goes to Prabhasa. And there he meets Krishna. So Krishna actually introduces Subhadra to him and Arjuna has fallen in love. One look, so love at first sight is not a new phenomenon. So Arjuna's heart, he meditates, only Subhadra sits here. Krishna knows Arjuna's condition. So he says, uh, see, uh, there are different ways by which a Kshatriya can marry a girl, a Kshatriya girl. But I find in this, in these circumstances, the best to be Subhadra Harana. You take away by force, you kidnap Harana, you kidnap Subhadra. And uh, Krishna arranges for his own chariot to be made available so that uh, Arjuna what a friend awesome friend <laughs> so Arjuna takes away uh, Subhadra and there is called a, you know there is also a form of Vivaha there is an acceptable form for Kshatriyas not for Brahmanas or Shudras or Vaishyas so there are different types of marriages acceptable forms of marriages so by force she is taken away and all the Yadus and uh, the whole of Dwaraka they are angry because they are a powerful people how dare Arjuna come as a guest because he is received there very well he comes as a guest and he stabs us in our back that's unacceptable but then Krishna convinces them see no problem this is acceptable and he explains the logic and they are also convinced and hence they go treat Arjuna as their you know uh, mapile Apple, son-in-law, okay, son-in-law or brother-in-law, whichever you call it. And hence they all proceed to Indraprastha, where the marriage is solemnized. And then there, 
Krishna is there, everybody is having good time and children are born. Abhimanyu is born to Subhadra and uh, Pancha Pandavas. Prativindya is born to Draupadi by Yudhishthira. Sutta Soma is born to Draupadi by Bhima. Shruta Karman by Arjuna. Satanika by Nakula. Shruta Sena by Sahadeva. All these five children are born to Draupadi, Panchali of Panchala Desha. So they have a very good time. It's all good time. Kids around. You know, babies around. It's a wonderful time. It's a very happy time. That's when uh, Krishna and Arjuna decide to have some alone time because they are like long lost friends. Actually, they are the rishis Nara and Narayana taken birth as Ar Krishna, you know, Arjuna and Krishna. So they uh, choose to spend time in Khandava, the Vana Khandava, along the banks of Yamuna. There, a Brahmana, a blazing Brahmana appears and they know it's Agni. He says, uh, I want to burn this forest to satiate my hunger but uh, the devas don't allow me to because uh, there is this takshaka within it who is the friend of indra and hence indra pours his rains and puts out my fire so please help me so, and why does uh, agni have his high on khandava specifically because uh, there is this uh, once upon a time, Shvetaki conducts a lot of yajnas, so many yajnas one after the other, so many going simultaneously that all the brahmanas are tired. Hey, please leave us. Mudila, Ponanda Sami. And they leave him. Shvetaki approaches Rudra. He does immense tapasya. And Rudra appoints Durvasa and Amsha of himself as uh, the, you know, the person the uh, Rishi who will conduct the yajnas of Shvetaki and there is a 12 year long yajna in which so much butter, clarified butter, ghee is poured that uh, Agni Ajirana you know, indigestion Agni suffers from indigestion can Agni suffer from indigestion? anybody can so much clarified butter non-stop ghee here will suffer from indigestion and so Brahma says uh, don't worry Agni because Agni's splendor is lost when you have indigestion you will see your uh, your face looks dull your uh, state of energy itself is dull you are not uh, in your full spirit you are not you know? when there is good Jataragni that means digestive fire you will be in full spirits. When it is dosed, it will be uh, dull and lethargic. Agni has lost his And Brahmaji advises, okay, you go and have burn Khandava. There are so many herbs, roots, and plus the animals, their fleshes and fat will actually help re-invoke your Agni. Appetite. And plus, Khandava has now become home to so many uh, Pisachas, Takshasas, Asuras, Nagas that you go and burn that. So, Brahmaji has given this appointed Agni to burn Khandava. But Indra is not allowing uh, Agni to consume it fully. And hence, he approaches, Agni approaches Krishna and Arjuna to agree. But they say, Arjuna is able to. I need appropriate bow and arrows and Nagni summons or invokes Varuna. He gives them who gives Arjuna his Gandiva. That's when Arjuna receives his Gandiva, the famed bow. And two quivers of arrows which are inexhaustible, which do not get exhausted. And an and awesome chariot with superb horses, Gandharva horses. Remember Angaraparna? And to Krishna, he is given Sudarshana Chakra. In his 
in this Shivakram. When he takes in his in, in this incarnation, this is given to him for the first time. And with that, they do an awesome job. They defeat the uh, Indra's army with all the devas multiple times, many times over. And hence, Indra has to give up. But before then, there is this full-fledged war going on. Agni is burning. Indra is pouring rains. Arjuna shoots his arrows in such a way that there is a dome. So many square miles of dome around the Khandava, Khandava forest so that Agni can burn in spite of Indra's shove. Shukra's wife wants to their son Ashwasena and she swallows him with his tail pointing out. She tries to rise up and Arjuna at that time cuts off her head. At that instant Indra makes Arjuna unconscious through his power and Ashwasena escapes. Ashwasena the Asura, Naga, not Asura, Naga escapes and hence Arjuna curses Ashwasena. You have escaped in a very unholy manner. You did not fight back with me and hence you will be infamous will not attain to fame. So Ashwasena escapes. And then Arjuna fights with even greater vigor. Then the Asura Maya, who is equal to Vishwakarman of the Devas, architect, he seeks Arjuna's protection. And hence Arjuna offers his protection and Krishna does not harm him, Agni does not harm him. So Maya Asura also escapes. And there are these birds, Sarangakas, Sarangakas, actually their story goes like this, Manda, you know, there is this uh, Rishi, Mandapala, who does awesome tapasya and he engages himself in so many yajnas. But he, when he goes to heaven, the doors are closed and it's announced to him, see, you don't have children. So go get some children and then these doors will open up. Because that is also considered dharma. There are three as per the Indian tradition, there are three aspects to be taken care of. One is Yajnas to satisfy the Devas. Another is and that's and the third is children to satisfy your ancestors, Pitris. So we are, when we take a human body, we are supposed to incur debts. So we are debted, indebted to the Devas, to the Rishis, to the Pitris. So we have to satisfy these. So the Rishi Mandapala assumes the body of a bird, Harangaka. And uh, with his wife Charita, he sires four children who are all Rishis. And then he goes to another wife, Lipita. And then the Khandava forest is burning. He requests Agni to please spare his children. Agni agrees. So when the time comes when the when Agni is burning the forest, and uh, these four children along with Jarita are perched. The four children because of their knowledge of Vedas already. Okay, and these are birds, but Rishis as birds. They satisfy Agni and he does not burn them. And hence the family is reunited. Okay, Mandapala comes back, he is first is rejected, but then uh, he explains his reason for leaving because his wife, Jarita, is doubting, constantly doubting Mandapala just as Arundhati did to Vashishta and hence Arundhati becomes a smaller star, smoke filled star compared to Vashishta. Otherwise Arundhati it is said was equal to Vashishta in brightness and luminosity. So they are binary star systems both going around each other around a common center of gravity. This we will look at later.
and when we look at astronomy. So these Ashwasena has escaped, Maya Sura has escaped, and the Sarangaka birds have escaped. Rest all creatures and the entire forest is burnt and the Agni has a wonderful time. 15 days he burns the complete forest. At the end of it, Indra is actually happy with Arjuna. Grants a boon for all Indra. Indra says, uh, at the appropriate time, I will give you give you the celestial weapons. And Krishna, Krishna is actually uh, superior. If you study the Bhagavata Purana, Krishna lifts the Gro Govardhana mountain to pro and protects people from Indra himself. So Indra is no match for Krishna, for Krishna's energy. So he cannot exactly ask a boon from someone who is at best equal, actually inferior. So he simply says, uh, okay, let uh, me and Arjuna be friends forever. And uh, Indra says, Apriya Akhatam, so be it. And uh, thus ends the Adi Parva. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha